Less than five days after a devastating piece on CNN chief Chris Licht appeared in The Atlantic, Licht is officially out at the network. His boss, David Zaslav, the very guy who promised The Atlantic reporter an interview in which he was expected to support Chris Licht and say glowing things about him, only to then back out of it altogether, now tells the CNN newsroom, Licht tried, but thanks to a myriad of problems, he's out. So much for Lick's assurance to The Atlantic that David Zaslav has my back. Like any media executive, he did until he didn't. It's a disgusting industry. It's how it works. The problem for Chris Licht was not entirely his vision or that of CNN's new owner, Warner Brothers Discovery, to remake CNN into a more fair and balanced network. The problem was one of ego, style, and approach. Licht inspired, as far as I can tell, um, no one. He was not adept at building relationships at all. He seems to be a man with a fragile ego who obsesses over press coverage, not of the news, but of himself. He came in with a lot of swagger on the heels of a beloved leader being quickly ousted. Yes, Jeff Zucker was beloved, biased, and responsible for um, ruining the network, but he was beloved. That situation required some tact and perhaps some hand-holding and Licht seemed incapable of either. Focused more on his newly svelte, machine-like body, that's a quote from him, and typing his name into Google, then on earning the respect of his staff. Which leaves the question, can anyone turn CNN around? The problems Licht was trying to solve are very real, whether CNNers want to admit it or not. CNN has lost the trust of its one-time large audience. Its brand has changed from most trusted to most pathetic. Jim Acosta and his enormous ego, Brianna Kilar and her sneering coverage of anything Trump-related, Alison Camerata and her snide judgments, Christian Amanpour and her smug elitism. Even formerly benign anchors like Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer are now more associated with the resistance than with straight news journalism. The soul-searching, tearful meltdown post-Trump town hall is just the latest example of how far the left, uh, how far left the network has gone. Are we in the news business or aren't we folks? So what now? Can anyone rebuild this brand into, if not a sterling name, then at least an acceptable one? Zucker tried to make CNN into MSNBC by design. He saw no market for a nonpartisan news network. In doing so, he attracted many liberal viewers who already had and have their choice between virtually every network save Fox and Newsmax. But he sacrificed CNN's appeal to its centrist audience, never mind any right-leaning viewers who did not consider themselves never-Trumpers. Chris Licht tried to undo that bias, but with the same anchors and the same audience who were already hooked on the crack cocaine of hating Donald Trump. No wonder it didn't work, and the channel's ratings are now in the toilet. Seriously, they are regularly losing to Newsmax, which is in some 20 to 25 million fewer homes than CNN with probably one one one-thousandth the budget. Discovery Time Warner bought this asset reportedly wanting to make it more fair, less biased, less hateful toward Republicans and the right, but not disdainful of the left either. You know, the way CNN used to be. It really did used to be that way. I used to watch it while I was on Fox. That's going to take time, a lot of it. Zaslav seems to know that. In March, he spoke to the CNN newsroom acknowledging what Jeff Zucker had done, that he had gone hard partisan. And while that brought some more viewers in, Zaslav reportedly said, it's not what I came here to do. Even saying, as they turned this ship around, quote, ratings be damned. And they were. So can CNN be salvaged? The hope is clearly that long-term, they will win enough audience back from the middle and the right to make CNN a profit leader again change out the far left audience. But they forgot the other part of the formula. The workforce must change as well. The ones who cost the network its reputation in the first place. The far left producers deciding on CNN's online and show content. Their influence is enormous and extraordinarily brand damaging. Roger Ailes hired plenty of lefties. News leans left, especially straight out of journalism school but they had to be open to a different way of covering the news or they would not be hired there. CNN has activists 
who will never embrace a fair and balanced mission. Each one of them should be rooted out and fired. That is the only way. And then there's the talent. Tolerable as secret lefties who had their own political views but were at least generally respectful to the other half of the country while on the air. They were coaxed, goaded, and encouraged by Jeff Zucker into letting their leftist flags fly during Trump. They laughed at his voters, mocked at them, derided them. The examples are legion. They spat all over everything from gun rights to pro-life beliefs to voters' questions about the fairness of elections to their doubts about the COVID hysteria, not to mention the Black Lives Matter abuses, gender insanity, and sexualization of children in school. None of that, none of it, got a fair shake on CNN under Jeff Zucker or since. Why? Because no one kept their hands at 10 and 2 on the steering wheel, and too few internally had a basic instinct to be fair. If I were David Zaslav, I'd be pulling an Elon Musk. I'd fire a lot of people, a lot of people on air and off. Anyone whose views did not align with the new mission of unbiased news would be given a severance package and shown the door. CNN is well known to be one of the most grossly overstaffed media companies in the business to begin with. They can take a massive staffing cut, trust me, and they will be just fine. Remember when Netflix was getting pulled to the far left and staffers wanted the bosses to terminate their deal with Dave Chappelle? It took absurd demands like that to make those in charge finally say, uh, no, no, we will platform people of all views. And if you don't like it, there's the way out. The Wall Street Journal went through this too. In July of 2020, 280 of its staffers, this is a more right-leaning publication, 280 of its staffers openly demanded changes to its opinion pages after pieces appeared that they found objectionable. Pieces from people like, oh, Vice President Mike Pence on COVID and Heather McDonald on the left's lies about systemic racism. The company refused to be cowed, telling the whiners it would not bow to cancel culture and that these staffers were free to work elsewhere, adding, quote, the anxieties of the staff are not our responsibility. Pitch perfect. CNN, it's your only choice. The anchors and reporters who have alienated the viewers you are trying to win back need to go. Firing Don Lemon, Chris Cuomo, and Brian Stelter was a start, but I'm afraid the problem went well beyond that, and so must the solution. You're going to have to say goodbye to still more talent and many who work behind the scenes. I have nothing personal against these folks, but they sacrificed their credibility during the Trump era and that of their network, and there is a price to be paid for that. It is the only way forward. The rub of all this is it may not work. I'm not at all sure CNN is savable, but this is its only chance. And the Chris Licht replacement needs to not only be mission-focused, a term Licht was apparently fond of uh, per The Atlantic, which is ironic since he apparently failed to share that mission with the staff who were reportedly blindsided to read about it in The Atlantic, uh, but also someone who knows how to lead. Not everyone understands that. To maintain the authority of a boss and also has a proven record of inspiring people to follow him or her. To that person who has not yet been chosen, lots of luck. You're going to need it. Maybe you've heard me talk about Bonner Private Wine Partnership. Their rare Malbecs are incredible. If you enjoy a glass of wine, try these wines from the extreme altitudes of Argentina. The flavor is unlike any other. Blackberry, leather, smoke, little dark cherry. And these wines are nearly impossible to get on your own. The producers deep in the Andes Mountains make limited quantities. The best part, they have cut out the middleman. You will not deal with a big markup. Today, I've got a great offer for you. If you visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash MKS, that's B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS, you will not only get the wine for over 50% off, plus free shipping, you'll also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It's a deal that's hard to turn down if you are a wine lover like I am. Just visit Bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.